The index of a book tells you where everything is located and then you're able to go to that specific page or pages of the book to read about it. The index function in Excel merges both of these steps together into a single function. The index function will take a range of values that you're interested in, like the listing within an index of a book, and then either one or two inputs depending on whether your range is in one or two dimensions. In response, the function will then show you the value that is found at the intersection of your inputs. To get a better sense of our inputs, let's look at the index tooltip helpers. The index function can seem quite complex as there are actually two forms of the function upon starting the entry, and this could quickly overwhelm many users. However, using it is surprisingly simple. For both entries, the array and reference inputs mean the same thing. However, they provide some additional flexibility between the two that you might cover in a more advanced course. Either way, each entry represents the range of possible areas for values to be located within. In the book example, the array would be the collection of pages within the book with a listing of each of the items. For this initial example, I'll select this small array of items containing fruit names. The next value is the row num parameter. This parameter means one of two things depending upon the shape of the original array. If the array is one-dimensional, then this value will represent the number of cells to step into the array. If the array is two-dimensional, then this value will represent the number of rows down to step into the array. Since our current example is a single column, it will function under the first form, where the row num is simply the index. I'll type the value 3 in here. The third entry is an optional column number. This entry is required if the array parameter is a two-dimensional field, otherwise it should be excluded. As my selection is one dimension, I will exclude it. The fourth field in the secondary type of index is the only difference between the two types. This field allows a user to input multiple non-congruent ranges for the reference parameter and determine which area to index into. This concept is well beyond the scope of this course and can be effectively ignored for now. Pressing enter with just the array and the row number entries will result in the value grapes, since it is the third item in my list. In a vacuum, the index function really has nothing to do with lookup functions, as it is simply about pulling a specified value from a list of other values. However, think back to what our match function does. The match function looks through a list of values to determine where in that list of values a certain item exists, which makes the match function a perfect complement to the index function. To see how, let's go to our animals and zoo summary and see how they can work together. In our summary, we have our lookup function that works nicely with a VLOOKUP to identify the row with the correct animals data, with a working match function to identify the column with the correct zoo. Thinking about the features of the VLOOKUP and match functions, you should remember that the match function is superior in its flexibility and that it has the ability to search ascending and descending lists differently, while the VLOOKUP can only do ascending lists. With the index function, we can completely eliminate our reliance on the VLOOKUP function and use simply a combination index match function to locate the correct animal count. This will also help introduce you to the two-dimensional index approach. Conceptually, I want to replace my VLOOKUP function with index into B5, A22, match animals, and match zoo. This represents that my row index is determined by the animal that I want to find, while my column index is defined by the zoo that I want to look at. If I quickly enter this function, you'll see that the value is unchanged since both functions are doing the same thing, but there's an interesting catch. The index plus match function combination actually calculates significantly faster than the VLOOKUP plus match combination. While not apparent here due to the size of the workbook, if you work in large workbooks with hundreds and thousands of formulas, the time savings can be quite significant. Anyhow, let's get back to the function itself. Any combination of VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP functions can be replaced with an index plus match combination function. In many cases, this can provide improved resiliency in addition to improved performance. Consider the situation for a simple HLOOKUP function. I have a pair of rows here with a fruit name and associated number with each in the next row. Perhaps it's their grocery scanning code. An HLOOKUP function could quickly be written, as shown here, to get that code using a row index of 2 and your function would be perfect, until something happened. Let's suppose that somebody comes along and added a row between them. Perhaps they did this to add the Spanish names, perhaps they did it out of spite. Who knows? Such an error would hopefully be caught quickly, but wouldn't it be nice to avoid that error in the first place? 
we can replace our simple HLOOKUP function with a slightly more convoluted index match combination like so. In my index, I want to index into the range of codes. So this array refers to the numerical values that I want to return. Since this is a one-dimensional search, my row number will be my index number. For my row number, this is where I want to put my match function because this is where I want to find where in the list the fruit resides. So I'll match my fruit lookup value, which is what my H lookup was looking for before, and for my lookup array, I'll define my list of fruits. Finally, I'll use an exact match here. After writing this formula, I could insert a whole page's worth of rows between our fruit name and our value. Doing so, the formula remains intact while providing the response that we expect. The HLOOKUP could have been modified to include a match function, however, there wasn't anything in our B column for us to match to determine which row was necessary given the available data set. Within the confines of our data, though, we did have a way to create a more resilient and effective lookup function using the index match approach. The index function, much like our match function, is not hugely useful in and of itself, but when incorporated with the match function and other functions that I'll introduce later in the course, the index function becomes a tool for quickly and efficiently identifying specific pieces of data contained within larger data sets. Try replacing some of your VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions that you've used recently with index and match functions to become acquainted with them. Hi, I'm Nigel from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching. If you need additional Microsoft Excel 2016 training, you can get our entire 60 course software training library for $1. This is a limited time offer that includes three individual Excel 2016 courses to help you master Microsoft Excel. Click the Learn More button on the right. I'll see you next week with additional videos.